Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of MHI's Roundtable Discussion. I'm here joined today as usual by my brother Carlos, Dr. Rudy, and today we have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. Nathan Bryan. Nathan is nothing short of the world's leading authoritative voice on the subject of nitric oxide, which is the primary molecule that regulates our blood vessels and cardiovascular system. And at just 24 years of age, Nathan already had a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and a PhD in molecular and cellular physiology. The discovery of our human DNA holds the record for the fastest Nobel Prize ever given to a scientific discovery, and rightfully so, it changed the face of scientific history. Now, the discovery of nitric oxide impact on our cardiovascular health holds the second spot, and by 32, he was recruited by the same Nobel Prize winning group and has been researching nitric oxide ever since. And as our advisor, we take great pride in his groundbreaking work, which has been instrumental in establishing nitric oxide's vital role in maintaining healthy cardiovascular system, among many other benefits. And as if that wasn't enough, Dr. Brian is also the author of over 100 peer-reviewed published papers and a book called Functional Nitric Oxide Nutrition, which is a must read. Lastly, aside from being our world's ultimate nitric oxide nerd, he's also the coolest Texan on the planet yes, who can is. kick your butt. Yes, he is. So without further ado, Doc, thank you for coming out and meeting with us today. We're truly honored. Well, thank you very much. It's my, my honor and pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. What an introduction, man. That was amazing. This reads like, oh my God, this is great. So let's start with the beginning. What is nitric oxide and tell me about its biological effects? Well, thanks, Rudy, and, and thanks, Carlos and Miguel, for, for having me. This is certainly exciting. Uh, and you, make up, you bring up a good point. You know, I taught in medical schools, future physicians, for a number of years, and it wasn't part of the curriculum, even, you know, a decade ago. Yeah. But, you know, science and innovations change the world, right? And I think the discovery of nitric oxide cer certainly changed the scape of uh, cardiovascular medicine. In fact, I think all human medicine. But nitric oxide is a signaling molecule. It's a gas. It's produced in the lining of the blood vessels. It's produced in basically all cell types. It was first discovered in, in our endothelial cells. So this gas, once it's produced, it signals, right? So it's how cells in the body communicate with one another. Its primary biological action is signaling the smooth muscle that surrounds our blood vessels to relax and dilate. So when you get dilation of the blood vessels, you improve oxygen and nutrient delivery to every cell in the body. It's a key regulator of inflammation. You know, as a physician, you certainly know the impact of inflammation. It's the silent killer. Nitric oxide is a potent anti-inflammatory molecule. It down-regulates the adhesion molecules on the lining of their blood vessels, prevents platelets from sticking, and basically regulates blood flow to every organ, tissue, and cell in the body. So you now can imagine if your body becomes deficient in nitric oxide, there are a lot of bad things that happen. You get high blood pressure, you develop erectile dysfunction, you develop vascular dementia and cognitive disorders. And you really, it's, it's now recognized that the loss of nitric oxide is the earliest event in the onset and progression of most, if not all, chronic diseases. Wow. That's so impressive. Uh, yeah, so, so much. And, and one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I think that made it very uh, important for me, nitric oxide is at the basis of every organism. It's not just humans, right? This is the basics of life. And as you say, in the endothelium, sometimes for our patients, it's even hard for them to picture what's the endothelium. It is the, the lining of our vessels. And this is what controls whether, you know, it's like a, a, a garden hose. Is there a kink to it? Is it smaller? Is it bigger? How much water, how much blood flow you have? And that's the basis of life of every organism. I think I, I saw that nitric oxide was designated as the molecule of the year, right? In, in 1992. In 92, that's I right. was in medical school in 1992. I never heard <laughs> of this. Right. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, so, so amazing. Thank you for explaining it. I like yeah, the and way I you always, I always like to tell the viewers so they can get a mental image of the, the, the vast amount of the size of your endothelium. And this will be the fun fact of the day. If you tie the endothelium end to end, it goes around the planet two and a half times. I mean, this is how much of this you have, right? And nitric oxide is the main regulator of that entire system. That's right. You know, every organ, tissue, and cell in the body is controlled by access to oxygen and nutrients through the cardiovascular system. So if your cardiovascular system isn't healthy and you don't have sufficient nitric oxide production, then you're depriving those organs, tissues, and cells of oxygen, nutrients, and 
they basically become dysfunctional. If you don't give the body what it needs, it can't perform. Completely. And I like that you, you call it that. You don't call it that. That's the name for nitric oxide. It's a signaling molecule. That's how cells communicate with each other. Guys, we're all married. What do our wives so always say? Communication is the most important thing. Talk to me. Yes. This is how cells talk to, to, to our body. And that we get our, our functions, our biological functions. So when I think about disease, right, you always think about hormones. Is it, uh, physiology is at the base of all this. If you don't have enough blood flow, if you don't have enough oxygen, um, nothing will work. Yep. Yeah, it's exactly that simple. Right. So, so thank you for conceptualizing this for us. So I think this is an important uh, segment to move. How does nitric oxide impact your cardiovascular health and how could it treat or even prevent cardiovascular disease? Yeah, so in, um, you know, in the 1980s, it was discovered that the endothelial cells make a substance called, uh, at the time was called endothelium derived relaxing factor, or EDRF. And so it was that molecule that controlled the, the tone of the blood vessels. So whether it's, you know, you got really healthy blood vessels that are compliant and soft with each heartbeat, or without this molecule, your blood vessels become stiff, and there's a lot of damage that's caused which, with these pulse waves from each heartbeat. And then when that was discovered to be nitric oxide, then that kind of opened up the field. So what does this mean? That if your blood cells, if your endothelial cells can make sufficient nitric oxide to maintain vascular tone and elasticity, then it protects the blood vessels from atherosclerosis or the fat and deposition and the instability of the blood vessels that you see in, in patients with cardiovascular disease. So this functional production of nitric oxide precedes these structural changes, which you can diagnose with either ultrasound or even you know, exercise stress test. So your, the functional loss of nitric oxide precedes the structural changes by many years, sometimes decades. So the most important kind of metric for people that, and I think what you guys do is so important because you're trying to get a, ahead of the disease, right? Yes. Teach prevention instead of right. you know, reactive uh, medicine. And so the most important metric, I think, and what the science supports is that you have to figure out how well your body's making nitric oxide. Because only when you become diagnosed with ischemic heart disease or cardiovascular disease or plaque in the lining of the blood vessels, now we recognize that you're 10 years past kind of the cause of that. Now we've got to implement strategies to not only restore nitric oxide production, and when we do that, we can actually reverse disease. So it's the most, in fact, it's been called the, the holy grail in cardiovascular medicine and not Nobel Prize in 1998, a molecule of the year in 1992. Uh, and today, I believe there's over 190,000 scientific papers published on nitric oxide. So the, the evidence is, is clear that your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide. Wow. Imagine that. And, and no matter what, what's the number one killer in the U.S.? Heart disease. It remains cardiovascular disease. No. So we're, we're spending all this money, all this money on diagnostic testing, on, on really looking at reactive medicine. Once you already have the disease, again, we're into root cause prevention. What do we do to try to prevent this from happening? So as we're looking at it, it looks like in every life, nitric oxide is one of the most important molecules Elemental. to maintain good health. And it's crazy that there's all this research, and I'm guilty of this. Uh, I've been in this field, what, 20 years? I I've never paid that much attention to nitric oxide. So thank you for bringing this to life and really making it alive. I know everybody's listening to this. There's a lot of noise about nitric oxide, and that's the problem. There's so much noise that at the end of the day, it gets so confusing that I looked into nitric oxide at some point. I didn't see much, didn't understand the concept and the reality of it, so you give up. You see it as, as a supplement. It is way more than, than, than an over-the-counter supplement. Well, I think that's been the, that's, it's a huge problem. And you know, I, coming from a scientific academic background, I think it's my objective to kind of maintain the integrity of the field and maintain the integrity of the science. And, you know, after the Nobel Prize was awarded in 1998, there were a number of companies that just flooded the market with nitric oxide products. products. And, you know, today that continues. And so there's some companies that are just naive. They don't understand the science and the biochemistry, and that's fine. There's other companies out there who know the science but are deliberately deceptive and fraudulent in their marketing. And I think, you know, you make a very good point because people, either physicians or patients, try these nitric oxide, so-called nitric oxide products, and they don't get an effect. Mm -hmm. They don't get an improvement in blood pressure and, yeah. and normal kind of physiological function. So they say, oh, yeah, I tried nitric oxide and it didn't work for me. And that can kill the entire field. And it's yeah. too important, this field is too important to do that. So one of, I've made it one of my objectives is calling these companies out 
showing these products don't generate nitric oxide. They may contain good ingredients, uh, but it's not a nitric oxide product. And that's a huge point. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's a huge point because with us, um, and this is why we have guys like you, <laughs> you know, so, that, so the viewers can hear from the horse's mouth and I mean at the top of, of the field because, you know, a lot of times we're trying to help people and they're like, oh, I'll just buy these products over here because they're cheaper. And it's, it's Amazon. you know, we, we invest Amazon. so much time, effort, resources, money into objective testing on what really works. And so that's why we bring guys like you to communicate to people like, hey, you can't just buy anything because 99% of the stuff that's out there is either fraudulent or non-effective. And yeah. we'll, you know, we'll get into that. Mike has some questions about that. Yeah, no, I've tested most, if not every single nitric oxide product on the market. And as you mentioned, 99% of them don't do anything. Wow. There's no nitric oxide. So what we do is completely different. You know, if, if we figured out I was the first to really make a solid dose form of a bioactive gas. So the discovery of nitric oxide was extremely important, the Nobel Prize in 1998, but nobody had figured out how to deliver this gas, which has gone in less than a second. How do you deliver that in a shelf-stable, uh, bioactive form? And so I did that in the form of a lozenge. Now we've, we've expanded kind of our repertoire into different market segments and, and product offerings. But the whole point I want to make is that if you, take a nit if you take a product, whether it's a drug, a supplement that actually generates nitric oxide gas, you see the benefits. Yeah. We've seen this in, in randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials, the gold standard in kind of clinical medicine. Now we're taking this technology into FDA-approved drugs. Amazing. So we see the effects in patients by every objectable, objective endpoint and measurements. I, I think another them. important point that even if they're taking the best products, is we find consistency and compliance to taking the, the supplement. <laughs> <laughs> but when you know the science behind it, so, so a lot yeah. of times, that, and that's why we're doing this. Yes. If you yeah. just tell the patient, take this, yeah. but they don't that's understand why, even me as a physician, I, would, I did not get it until we talked, until I listened to your talks. But, but if we can even go back a little further, before we go into the gas and into the, tell me how is nitric oxide produced? Because um, there's different um, ways, and also what's the difference? Because you say gas, you know, there are some people here listening, is it nitrous oxide? Is it the laughing gas that some people are uh, abusing? And that's a drug of abuse. So can you make the difference first, how is it produced, and what's the difference between nitric and nitrous oxide? Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best. And we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.